This is a SeaTech Multi XS 3600, which I rescued from the trash a couple of days ago. Uh, I figured I'd give it a shot at bringing it back to life, but at the least it uh, might do for a somewhat interesting autopsy if it's out of luck. It seems to have been subjected to quite a bit of sunlight, and the gasket shows the same, and some moisture damage on the screws, so this thing might be a bit rusty inside, but We'll see what happens. It seems to come apart with just a couple of Phillips screws around the bottom. And we're in. And at the first glance this thing actually looks uh, pretty tidy, but... Uh, <laughs> smells like caps. And indeed, if we have a poke in there, we can just barely spot a G Luxon brand. And the primary size capacitor seem to be pretty anonymous. But judging from the smell inside of this, I'd say something underneath there has gone wrong. Oh wow, this is actually pretty dodgy. SeaTech is supposed to be a quality brand made in Sweden or something, but. Uh, yeah, that's the mains cord. Plug straight into the wall. You can just <laughs> pull it out like that. <laughs> that's that's dodgy. That is dodgy. These leads look uh, quite mangled. They, it seems they've just uh, shoved the board in with the leads just folding underneath it. Yeah, not impressed in the slightest. There is some kind of rubber gasket there, it's gone pretty hard. But they have actually covered this in grease. I'm not certain if it shows up on camera, but this is covered in probably waterproofing uh, marine grease. And curiously, it's actually got two fuses on the primary there. Perhaps one of these is shot. I actually haven't plugged this thing in. But now we can at least have a look underneath the board in here. Well, that's... that's no good. That's uh, not a very nicely installed. That, that, that's like, what, four bodge wires? I mean, come on. They can do better than that. I mean, this is just hot glued down there. Just coming from all over. That one's soldered to the pin of a surface mount resistor. Surface mount resistor. Some through the whole thing. That's the button, which seems to be quite well implemented, at least with a little plastic knob on it. But yeah, this is, this is not good. Not good in the slightest. I am not impressed. And the soldering of these mains leads... Mm, yeah, it's not broken, but that's... that's ugly. Not clean, just ugly. And this heat sink? Kind of soldered there, not really. Yeah. I, I'm very disappointed. I was under the impression that these were high quality chargers. They certainly charge for high quality chargers. I think one of these is like 80 euros and it's just a 4 amp charger. And it is switch mode, it's probably reasonably efficient. But yeah, this build quality is dodgy. Very dodgy. Oh dear. Those mod wires, they just go straight into a tube of shrink wrap which has a little PCB inside it. What? What's going on? Is, is that a trim potentiometer in there? What? What on earth? Oh, that's just bad. That's so bad. I mean, come on. <laughs> Even I could do better than that. Oh, jeez. Really? This is a production unit? Yeah. Well, I just had a quick measure around the unit and surprisingly both the main fuses are okay. The two primary caps are totally at to about 40 microfarads at maybe 2 ohms, which is a bit what you'd expect out of a couple of cheaper primary caps, and even the secondary caps seem to be about as good as they're supposed to be, I had a total of 2,000 microfarads. And uh, the tiny ones are okay too, so maybe we should just ha plug this thing into the wall and see what happens. I can't spot anything obviously wrong with it, aside from 
Alright, let's see if I get my face blown off. I was drawing free once. Doesn't seem to be any LEDs. Hmm. Seems pretty dead. Let's try again with a battery connected. Hey, it's doing something. Thinks it's full. Maybe this thing's just gonna work. I don't know, it's an uh, office scrap heap. Well then, let's put the one unplugged across the battery. Thinks it's half full, drawing 12 watts. 13 watts, is it gonna do anything? Yeah, that's not putting out 4 amps, that's for certain. Well, it is charging, but just very slightly. Hmm. This is a bit cryptic, but these things are supposed to be super smart, so perhaps it's supposed to do some voodoo magic to make my 10 year old SLA better. Yeah, definitely some voodoo going on. It just shoved it into full mode and it seems to be doing nothing. Alright, to give it a bit more of a challenge, I hooked it up to a rather empty test battery under my bench, so this one should at least draw some current. And it is charging, but it's still just drawing 12 watts. So it's probably charging at like 800 milliamps or so. It might just be stuck in some low current mode because I think it's actually rated to do 0.8 amps there. So perhaps just for mode buttons broken. Hmm. Yeah, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get this thing out of the. 800 milliamp mode, so that's probably why they chucked it. Maybe it's just a switch. Maybe I'll just have to use this thing as an 800 milliamp charger. Either way, it seems to work well enough. And I think we might be quite on to the issue that's causing this unit to malfunction. Now, right here by the button, we've got a 4017 decade counter. These two little caps hiding under here are connected across its supply rail, and well. Now, there's about 5 ohms across those. And I don't think that one's supposed to be drawing an amp at 5 volts, so... I think something might have gone wrong in there. So what we actually have inside this bunch board... That's actually a whole lot of stuff. It seems we've got a HEF 4541 timer chip. This probably sets some kind of time out for something. I wouldn't know what because I don't even know what this charge is supposed to do. And what do we have underneath all this horrible gunk? The answer, not a whole lot. Relay, inductor, mini car fuse, and some pretty bad solder work on these output connectors. We do have these two little diodes, though, which seem to be the lowest resistance points on the shot that I've found thus far. I actually lifted a leg on the uh, decade counter, and it doesn't seem to be for failed, so I think one of these guys might, might be. And here's some more really crusty work. You've got this through-hole diode with its leg mounted on top of a flated through veer. That could very easily short. Sadly though, it's not the case in this unit, but yeah, that's no good. And yeah, I think we might have found our issue. Diode's not supposed to do that. So, if we just throw another one of those in there, perhaps we'll be good to go again. Alright, the diode in question was a 5.1 volt scene, perhaps not very surprisingly, as it sat right across the power rail, and I shoved a new one in there, reconnected everything just as dodgily as it was before, so, let's uh, pair this thing on and see if it does anything different. Uh, it's not entirely impossible that I've damaged something in the meantime. I've not been too careful working on this thing. So, we might get some fireworks too. But here we go. And now we've got 
an orange LED over there. And the button's responding. Would you look at that? Perhaps we can get a bit more current out of this thing now. Alright, everything's connected up. We've got the meter measuring current going into the back row there, so we'll see what happens. I'm drawing nothing. 650 milliamps. 4 amps. Well, there you go. I think the modes is. Uh, oh, what are they? I think this is just maintenance. This is low current mode, high current mode, and high current, high voltage mode, where it'll just overcharge the battery quite considerably. And at 4.25 amps, we're drawing 114 VA, or what's that in watts? Uh, about 70 watts. The power factor on this thing is certainly not compensated for. We're at what? 0.58. So, you, I suppose you can't have everything. This thing seems to be reasonably efficient anyway. I mean, we've got roughly 40 watts out and roughly 60 watts in, so that's uh, going to be, you know, about 80% efficiency, something around that. So that's not too bad. Definitely not too bad for a little trash picked freebie. Now I've just got to figure out a way to get this thing back into it. Ugh. So there you go, that's the inside of a C-Tech Multi XS 3600 12 volt battery charger, and I must just say, wow! For something that's uh, supposed to be a high end premium product, this thing fails on every single level. Uh, the only brand name components I could find in it were the Philips Logic ICs. Everything else is just horrible. I mean, bad components and horrible assembly. I mean, a bloody dodge board in something that's a relatively old product that's obviously been quite refined with all this fancy casing and stuff. And they, they leave stuff like this inside? I mean, what are they even doing? Awful. Just awful. Big thumbs down. I can't say anything else. And it's for failure of a scene diet like that. Uh, uh, that's fair enough, I suppose. It could just be a dodgy scene diet, and this thing's been running for some time. But yeah, come on, you can you can do better than that. Really disappointed. Anyway, I at least hope you found that to be enlightening. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.